Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment and I'm gonna be showing you the main key differences between the Z3 series and the Z5 series in the John Deere Zero Turn lineup. So if you'll stick with me here, we'll get started. First, let's talk engines. So on the Z3 series, you will only have a Briggs and Stratton option at the engine, but you will have a wide variety of the Briggs and Stratton engines, as you will have all the way from a 20 horsepower Briggs and Stratton M40 up to a 22 horsepower, and then a 24 horsepower ELS, which means extended life series, which means that this engine is gonna have some components inside of it that are going to add to the life of that that engine. Now new to 2021 on one of those 24 horsepower ELS engines, you will have the easy change 30 second oil change system, which will only be on the Z365R, which is a new model to 2021. Now, when we move to the Z5 series, you will have two different options. You will have a Briggs and Stratton option and a Kawasaki option. Now those are going to range from 24 up to 25 horsepower and you will also have with the Z5 in that Briggs and Stratton line, you will have an option for an EFI engine, which is the electronically fuel injected engine. Now, the next main difference may be one that matters to you more rather than not depending on what type of terrain you're gonna be mowing on. If you're going to be mowing on very flat surfaces, you know, not having a, any hilly areas or any sloped areas, this may not be a big deal to you. But one of the main differences that you can definitely see here between the Z3 and the Z5 is that the Z5 is going to come standard with a ROPS or a rollover protection system, whereas the Z3 does not have that feature. So this is gonna be a safety feature that comes with the Z5 that will protect you from the those rollovers, upsets, or overturns that the Z3 does not have. The next main difference is one that is commonly not thought of whenever we're looking at purchasing these mowers. It's something that just simply usually slips our minds as we don't think about the actual driving motors or transaxles that are on these machines. Now, as we make the jump from the Z3 to the Z5, there's obviously a significant difference in frame size, which we'll go over more in a minute. But with that, is going to come an upgrade in those transaxles. So on the Z3 series mower, you're gonna have the Hydro Gear EZT transaxles, which are going to be a more residential transaxle, still heavy enough, strong enough to move these mowers and to make sure and function as they should. But once we jump up to the Z5 series, we're gonna to move to that Tough Torque TZT7, either U or M. Now there's a jump also in quality between those two mowers. Now what this is gonna to translate to is more power to the ground and also more top speed. So what you're going to be looking at in the Z3 series is a top speed of seven miles per hour. When we move to the Z5 series, you'll have speed ranges between eight to nine mile per hour. Now to go along with those difference in transaxles, you would also imagine there would be a jump in the tire sizes that you're going to have from the Z3 to the Z5. And that is going to be the case. So in the Z3 lineup, your rear tires could be between 18 to 20. And on this mower here, we do have the 20s. So you can see the size of that tire versus when we jump to the Z5, your rear tires are going to be between 22 and 23. So with that is just going to come along with extra stability going to that larger tire. You're also going to have a little better ride quality, having that more tire, you know, more give, more air, a little more power to the ground, moving up from the Z3 to the Z5. Now you're also going to see a difference at the front tires, at the front casters, as on the Z3, they will go from 11 to 13 inch, and then on the Z5, they'll stay consistent at 13 inch across the entire lineup. The next major difference is going to be a big one, as this is the spot where we spend all of our time whenever we're on these mowers, and that's going to be at the seat. Now, here on these two models, on this Z355R and this Z545R, we're going to have the top of the line seat that's going to come in these series. So, 
right here at the Z3, we have this 18 inch high back seat with armrests. Now, as you move down in the Z3 series, you could get the 15 inch back seat without the addition of the armrests. So these seat ranges are, like I said, are going to be between 15 inch and 18 inch with the option of the armrests. Now, once you move to the Z5 series, you're going to start at an 18 inch and move up to a 22 and a half inch like we see here, also with the addition of the armrests. Now, a couple of the differences between the way these seats are set up, for one on the Z3 series, you're gonna see that these are all single piece seats. Now they will flip up and they do have the spring suspension. So on this machine here, as we can see, we've got the two spring suspension, very solid springs. They are replaceable. So that will be an option on these seats. And now once we move to the Z5, what we're going to see is we're going to have two piece seats here that will be able to be changed out. You're also going to have the spring suspension on these as well. As we can see here, it's also going to be a dual spring system that can be replaced. Now there will be a bar, as you can see here, that will hold this seat down into place. And then some of the other differences is, both of these seats are going to be adjustable fore and aft, so we can scoot those up or back so we can fit those different operators. But one thing that the Z5 is going to offer that, that the Z3 doesn't is the Z5 is going to offer the option for the Comfort Glide system, which actually gives you that fore and aft suspension that's going to go with the up and down of the spring suspension. The next major difference is going to be the way we adjust our cut of height. Now, this is a big one. Um, this is one that we often see can be a concern for different operators, depending on who that operator is is and so what we have here on the z3 is you will always see this hand lever system here where we pick that up and set that down onto a pin system that we use to pick our height so to do that we simply pull this pin out we pick our height which you're going to have the adjustments there we slide that in and then we can release this and set that down on now between whether you're going from the e series in the z3s all the way up to the R, you do have the option of adding in this foot raised lever here. So we can have that option, but you will always have the hand raise on the Z3. Now on the Z5, this system is gonna be a lot different. Instead of having that pin system that pulls out that we have a lever that goes down on, on the Z5, we're actually gonna have a magnetic pull pin system here that has our different cut, height of cuts easily labeled there, or we can simply pick that height of cut and then we're going to push in on our pedal push down on our lever and then that'll lower that deck down to the ground and then to raise that we simply pick it back up now one of the questions is here that we have gotten before is that if I have this system and somehow I have some disability here in my legs, is there an option for the hand raise on this C5? And as of right now, we don't know that there is that system. That is something that we've thrown out there, but just know that with the Z5, it is going to be a foot raise and lower system. Now, the next main difference is again going to be a big one. And I know that I've said that on most of these guys, but these are all things that we need to consider when we're looking into these two mowers and that is going to be at the mower deck. So on the Z3 series, you're going to have one option of build of mower deck, meaning that the XL Deep is going to be the only build of mower deck on the Z3 lineup. But you will have the choice between either a 42, which is a 12 gauge stamp deck, a 48, which is a 10 gauge, and also a 54, which is a 10 gauge. So you do have those different sizes and the different strengths there of those decks. Now, once we move to the Z5 series, you're going to have the option of the XL Deep or the high capacity. Now, the difference there is that once we move to the Z5, the 42 inch is no longer an option, but you get the addition of the 60 inch. So you could have the XL Deep Deck in a 48, a 54 or a 60. All of those are gonna be 10 gauge, or you can move to the high capacity deck here, which is gonna be deeper, be able to process more material, have some more reinforcement, and just overall a heavier deck as they will all be nine gauge. And you can also get those in all three sizes of 48, 54, 
or 60. Next major difference is going to be overall frame size. Now we talked a little bit about this in the beginning about how once we go from a Z3 to a Z5, we're moving up in that zero turn lineup. So we are going to be moving up in size. So what you're going to see for one, it'll be a very noticeable difference will be here at the actual mainframe pieces. So what you have here is you're going from a one to one and a half inch frame to a one and a half to two inch frame whenever we're moving from the Z3 to the Z5. So as you can see there guys, just a lot bulkier design there on the frame pieces and these pieces are going to run all the way through the mower there. So you do have that stability on both of those mowers. Both very solid tubular frames, going to be great options, but there is a major jump whenever we move up from the Z3 to the Z5. Now also what you'll see here is a different at the size of our casters. Now these are both going to have sealed bearings inside here that will last a very long time. But as you can see here, there's a major difference in the size of these two casters, which also means there's gonna be a difference in the size of the shaft. So you are going to have a more heavy duty design when you move up from the Z3 to the Z5. Now, while we're here at the foot platform, there is a difference here also that I wanna point out that is a major difference moving from the Z3 to the Z5. And when we get to the Z5, our whole foot platform, including the front here, is going to be removable and at the same, we will be able to remove the foot platform on the Z3, but it'll only be the flat section here. And you will actually have to take out a bolt before you can remove this platform. Whereas on the Z5, you will be able to remove it just by hand without any tools, without removing any bolts. And you'll also get this option here at the foot platform when you move up into the R series on the Z5s of some extra suspension at the foot platform that you will not get here on the Z3. The next major difference is going to have to do with fuel. Now we're talking about capacity and also the differences in the fuel gauges on these mowers. Now, whenever we're looking at the Z3, we're gonna have a fuel capacity of 2.1 gallons. Whenever we move to the Z5, we're looking at a fuel capacity of 4.5 gallons. Now, often the rule of thumb is that a mower is going to burn about a gallon an hour. Now, that can vary a little bit depending on, of course, how heavy a grass we're cutting, what type of terrain we're mowing. But just in general, that's a good rule of thumb is about a gallon an hour. So you can see here that when we move from the 2.1 to the 4.5, we are going to be able to get a lot more done when we move up to the Z5 rather than the Z3. But keep in mind the applications of these mowers because we know that the Z3 is going to be one of the, is the smallest residential series in the John Deere zero turn lineup. Whereas when we move to the Z5, we're moving up into that mid-level residential. So there is going to be that obvious connection there between getting more work done with the Z5. Now, when we're talking about fuel gauges, this is one huge difference between the two is that on the Z3 here, you will not have a fuel gauge. The only thing that we'll have is going to be a low fuel light which will pop up right here in the operator station. As we can see, we have the little symbol here. And when the fuel level is low, this will actually light up an orange or reddish color to let you know that your fuel is low. Now, whenever we move to the Z5, we're going to have two different fuel gauge options. For one, we'll have the sight gauge that we can see right here on the front. And then we'll also have the option of the fuel gauge right here in the operator station. Now, as we can see here, we we have a full control panel that's going to show us multiple different things with the fuel gauge, the RPM gauge, and also the battery gauge. But this is on an R model only. Now, whenever we move down into the E and M models, that fuel gauge will actually be right there on the hour meter. Another main big difference between these two models is that when we move from the Z3 to the Z5, we're now in 2021 going to have the option to have factory installed LED lights that run down here in the frame. That'll be good for showing that cutting path. And then also they will come with the lights here on our rollover protection system, which give a little bit of a red light there to the side so we can see kind of where we're going next. Now you do have the option of aftermarket attaching these lights 
onto this mower, onto the Z3s, but they will be an optional piece of equipment. You can get those from John Deere and add those, but they will not come factory installed like they can be on the Z5. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, we just ask that you'd please hit that like button and give us a subscribe as that helps us out as well. And also guys, if you're looking for any John Deere parts, make sure to check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.